Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and today we're going to take a look at how to use Unity's new input system to control a 2D platformer character in a simple game. Now, the new input system was added earlier this year in the current version of Unity, and it's really, really handy to use, and really good to use for multiple reasons, and the main one being that it automatically knows how to handle different controllers with different input. So for example, if you've got a player using a PlayStation controller or a player using an Xbox controller, it will automatically know uh, how to assign those buttons correctly. So you don't have to worry about uh, dealing with each of those individually. And it's a huge improvement over the normal uh, input system that they used to use in Unity. So. To demonstrate how it works, I just have a simple project set up, which you can download in the description down below if you want to follow along with exactly what we have here. I've got a simple player that will move around here, and at the moment it's just set up to use the normal input system. So if I open the script for this here, I'll just very quickly go over what I have in this thing. There's a bunch of code down here for just handling animations and flipping the character around, so you don't need to worry about that. The really important bits are here where I'm using the input get axis raw horizontal. That's how I'm telling my player to move around with its rigid body velocity. And over here, when I check that the space key has been pressed, that allows the player to jump. So as you might, can probably guess, this is using the old input system of Unity, which is great, but that can only really handle a couple of things. This one will be a little bit versatile because it's set up to work with controllers by default. But here I'm specifically saying, hey, press the space key down. So we want something that works a little bit more universally than that. So to set up the input system in Unity, let's jump back into the Unity editor. I'm going to go to Window, Package Manager. And we need to make sure once it fetches the packages here, that the packages here is set to Unity Registry. So we can see all the potential ones we can download. And I'm going to scroll down to Input System. Click on it, there we go. Uh, I already have it downloaded, so you'll probably have a download button here if you haven't already done that. And I'm going to hit install. And it'll take a moment to do this. So I just jump forward to it being done. And now a little warning message pops up to say that the Unity editor needs to restart to enable the input engine stuff. So let's just hit yes on this, and it'll automatically close and restart Unity. So this will take a moment, obviously. And when it opens back up again, we'll be back on the package manager in the exact same place we were a moment ago. So I'm just going to close out of this. And now, obviously visually, nothing is different. But if I go and play this game, I'm trying to get input using the old system. So I get an error down here telling me, hey, you're trying to get the old stuff, but you're using the new Unity input uh, setting or input system uh, components in your package too. So we want to get rid of that stuff first of all before we do anything else. So I'm going to dive back into my script and say, okay, well, I don't want to use this for moving my player and I don't want to use this for making my player jump. We're going to rewrite how that works in a little bit. But before we dive into that, we want to get our controls actually set up on the input system. So what we'll do is go to the player and we're going to add a new component to the player. We're going to add a player input so this is the player input component. This is looking for some actions. So actions are how Unity will check that something is being pressed. And rather than it being based on the button specifically, the idea behind the input system now is that it's looking for certain actions to happen. So at the moment, there is no action set up by default. So we're going to hit create actions here. So when we hit create actions, it'll ask us where it wants to save. I'll just put it in the main assets folder and I'm going to rename this to be player dot input actions so we'll save that then now that we created one we need to assign it here so let's hit the little circle to the side and i can select that from my assets folder or of course i can go to the assets folder here and drag the player in like that so we want to see what is going on here so let's double click on this to open it and this gives us a little window with the player input actions set up and you can see by default we have so options for the normal UI, but we also have player controls. So these ones are set up when we use that input actions uh, creator on the player component over here. And you can see by default, we have a movement, we have a look, and we have a fire. And if we drop down the movement, for example, this is set up to take input from the left stick on a gamepad, from WASD on a keyboard, uh, 2D axis on an XR controller, or a stick on a joystick. 
and that's really handy and what's really good is as i said it's going for a game pad here not specifically an xbox pad or a playstation pad or anything like that it's just looking for the left st left stick on any kind of controller pad which is really good because it allows you to support way more game way more uh interactions for your game so you're able to support anyone who uses any kind of controller basically on pc so let's close out of this and then back on the player input component over here if we go down to behavior we're going to switch this from send messages to invoke unity events and invoking unity events basically means we will call certain functions from our script whenever we, any of these actions happen so basically for the player Whenever a move action happens, which means that the left stick changes or WASD or pressed or anything like that. So let's go back here. Whenever that event happens, so if I drop down events and go to player, we have here move. So we would add to this list here a function for moving. But of course, at the moment, we don't have any function for moving on our player controller script. So we need to dive back into our script to set that up. So let's go to player controller here. And the first thing we're going to do is up the top, I'm going to say using unity engine dot input system, because we want to use the input system. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to have public void move, like so. Oh, no, don't uh, auto create an animator move. That's not what I want. Uh, public void move. And then what's really important is inside this bracket here, we want to put input in put action dot callback context and we're going to call this context and what this does is it gets whatever input is being sent in by the input uh, system so that's our that's our actions that are being pressed so, so when we move the character this will be getting that information and then what we need to do is store the information that's being sent in so what we want to store is the horizontal movement of our character so up here i'm going to put a private float that we'll call input x and then in here we'll say input x is equal to whatever our context is that's being sent in so context dot read value and the value we want to read is a vector 2 because we're getting horizontal and vertical movement so vector 2 that's what's being sent in and we want to get the x-axis value so that we were able to detect what input is being pressed. So now that we have that input that's coming in, back up here in the update loop, what I'm going to do is say the rigid body dot velocity is equal to new vector two. And instead of getting the input that gets axis raw horizontal, which I had previously, I'm going to just say whatever the input x currently is, multiply that by the move speed I have. Move speed, there we go. And I'm going to leave the Y velocity to be whatever it currently is because I don't want to make any changes to that just yet. So the reason we do do it like this instead of doing it um, in here. So we don't say the rigid body velocity is just equal to whatever that value is in here. It's because this is only called when there's a change in the movement. So for example, when you press left, that means it's telling us that the movement we're setting will be moving to the left. So it'll be setting the input x value, for example, to be minus one. But th they won't change, as long as you're holding to the left, it won't send that information again. So say you hold to the left for five seconds and then let it go. As soon as you press left, it'll use this function. But then as long as you're holding it, it won't keep doing it. It'll only do it again when you move back to zero or even when you move the incremental amounts along the way, that's fine. But just when it's not moving, this does not get called. So that's why we store this value as whatever we set it as. And then in the update loop, we can constantly be moving the rigid body using that value. So let's test this out. We'll save this. We'll go back into Unity. And we should see that we'll move. Well, we won't see anything yet because I didn't assign it to the player. But we'll do that and then we'll see it in action. So in the events of our player input under player we have a move and as you can see it's looking for a callback context and that's what we set up so i'm going to hit the plus here i'm going to drag the player into that slot and then much like using a button on the ui or anything we can go to select our function so we'll go to player controller and at the top here 
because it knows it's looking for that callback context, we can select the move one we had set up with that uh, input. And now when we play, there we go, I can move my character around. Okay, so that's great. We also need to make our character jump. But if I stop this playing and we go look at our player actions here, we don't have one for jumping. So let's quickly go through the process of setting up another action. And it's super duper easy. It's actually one of the best parts of all this is how easy this is. All I need to do is hit the plus symbol at the top here. And I'm going to add a jump. And then here, uh, well actually we have one default empty binding here that has no binding because it doesn't know what it's supposed to do. So we need to tell it, hey, when we want to jump uh, using the keyboard, the path we want to use is under keyboard, uh, we'll go by location and we'll use the space key. Okay, so that's the first one set up. Let's set up another one. We're going to add a binding by hitting the plus symbol here uh, uh, across from jump. And we're going to add a new binding. And this one is going to be for gamepad. And we're going to go to path. Let's just go back up to the top here. We're going to go to gamepad and we're going to use button south. So button south would be, for example, the X button on a PlayStation controller or the A button on an Xbox controller. So I'm going to hit button south, and that will be the bottom key on the right hand side of the controller, basically. So with that done, that's two simple inputs set up. Obviously, you can set up more if you want to, but those two will be the main kind of ones we want to use anyway. So I'm going to save that when I hit close, and then I'm going to go to player, and we need to create another function to do that jump. So let's uh, also just, just to demonstrate this, uh, now that we added that jump to the actions list, if you go to events and player, it'll automatically want to fill in an action here. So let's jump back into our script and we're going to go here and say public void jump. Again it's going to take an input action dot callback context called context and in here we're going to say if the player is grounded so if they're grounded when we press the jump button then then I'm going to get the rigid body velocity and apply the jump force. So I'm going to copy what I already had up here. And here we're saying rigid body velocity is don't change the x axis, but apply the jump force on the y axis. Now, the reason we do it here, actually within this function this time, instead of on move where we didn't do it, is because this will only be called when this jump is, uh, when this jump action is called. So let's save this and we'll go back in and test that this is working. So we'll let it compile. Then we'll go to our jump event here. Again, drag the player into that slot and go to player controller and select jump. So now when I play, we should see that we can jump and that works perfectly fine. Okay, so that works great, but there's one little issue with this that you might not notice at first, which is if I pr jump here and then hold the key down, so I'm still holding space and I'm gonna release space, we jumped again. Why did that happen? Well, as I discussed with the movement input, these actions are being called when something changes. So when the value of the x-axis here changed, for example, we would be changing the input x. But here, the jump value is changing. So when we press key, it's being on. And when we release key, then it's changing to be off. So regardless of whether it's on or off, it's only calling this context when that key is doing an action either way. So what we'll do is here, when we're checking that we're on the ground, right before that, we'll also say if context.performed and is grounded. So what we're saying here is, hey, the context, if it is just happened, so if it is just becoming active, basically, then we can do this as long as we're on the ground. So let's save that and we'll go back and check that out. When I press play now, we jump, that works fine. And if I hold and release, we don't get an extra second jump. So perfect. Now our input system is working absolutely correctly. It's pretty simple to get set up with this whole process. It's just a matter of going through and changing how you handle inputs a little bit uh, in your scripts. One extra thing that we can also do, just as an example of how this can work, is if I jump back into that script, I'm just gonna comment this bit of code out here. And if we go back up here, so previously 
in the normal version you would you, we could do a check and get the specific key using this whole method here but you may still want to do that depending on the type of game if you're making a completely pc based game you may only want to get certain actions for certain keys being pressed so what you can actually do is i'm just going to comment that out i can say here now that we're using the new input system we can just say if keyboard dot current so the current keyboard being used dot space key dot was pressed this frame so if the space key was pressed this frame then do that jump so obviously this action is no longer going to do anything because the velocity is not doing anything in here anymore so now when we press space we should still get the player jumping in our game so let's save this go back in and let it compile for a second and I press play and now if I jump there we go we got our jump working the way we want so perfect it's just a uh, just, just to demonstrate that you can still do those same actions with the new input system you don't have to go and set up an action for every key if your game is something that's going to use lots of specifically keys on the keyboard you can still very easily actually get input from any key on the keyboard well, there you go. Thanks for watching this video. I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness. Keep up the awesome work. Keep being amazing and I'll see you all very soon.